When a journalist asked the late John D. Rockefeller how much wealth was enough, the millionaire who was at the time of the richest, uh, of, of, of the richest and most powerful men in the world answered and said this, just a little more. There are no surveys indicating that people are any happier with more stuff. One interviewer asked several instant millionaires, how many of you are happier today? Not one responded positively. One winner replied, every time you get something nicer, it isn't good enough. Because you see and want something even nicer. How many people know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, yeah. iPhone holders? Yeah. 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 I, I bring it at home. 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 Yeah. See, com committing is serious business with God because it is one of the most complex and grievous of sins. The Bible lists it with five passions and warns that unrepentant covetousness will exclude a person from the kingdom of God. 1 right, Corinthians chapter 9, chapter 6, verses 9 and 10 says this, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusive of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Coveting is what you might call a seed sin because it can quickly lead to other sins. I wanted to get that again. I wanted to get that again. Coveting is what you might call a seed sin because it can quickly lead to other sins. In fact, the Bible tells us that coveting was the original sin behind the fall of man. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, it says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant for the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she looked, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Both the Old and New Testaments point out that committing is the root of many forms of sins, including lying. Second Kings chapter 5, verses 22 and 25. I want you to write that down. Write that down when you go home. You can check it out. Second Kings chapter 5, verses 22 to 25. Theft. That's Joshua 7, verse 21. That's Joshua 7, verse 21. Domestic troubles. Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15, verse 27. Murder. Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 12, lust. First Timothy 6, verse 9, that's first Timothy 6, verse 9, greed. Proverbs 1, verse 19, that's Proverbs 1, verse 19, envy. Titus chapter 3, verse 3, that's Titus chapter 3, verse 3, and jealousy. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. Both the Old and New Testaments point out that coveting is the root of many forms of sins, including lying, theft, domestic troubles, murder, lust, greed, envy, and jealousy. These are all manifestations of desire that has run amok in this world today. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one, and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, deceitful riches, money, possessions, or whatsoever is valued more than the Lord. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 says, For the love of money, that is the greedy desire for it and the willingness to gain it unethically. Now there's not a problem with having money. There's not a problem with gaining money and having a lot of money. But it's what you do to get that money that is a problem. So it says, for the love of money 
is a root of all sorts of evil, according to Amplified Version. And some, by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves through and through with many sorrows. My Lord. The antidote to forbidding is contentment. Is the church hearing me today? Amen. The antidote to forbidding is contentment. And contentment is something you have to learn. It does not come naturally or automatically. None of us are by nature a contented person. Do I, do I hear an amen? amen? Come on, do I hear an amen? amen. Do I hear an amen? amen. There's always something. Yes, right. There's always something. Yes. There always seems to be something yes. that we need more of. No, you some won't admit it, <laughs> but I will. But we're learning today that the antidote to committing is being contented. Be content with what you have. Ah, be content with what you have. Yeah. Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 to 13. I am not complaining in the CEV version. I'm not complaining about having too little, Paul says. I've learned to be satisfied with whatever I have. I know what it is to be poor or to have plenty. And I have lived under all kinds of conditions. I know what it means to be full or to be hungry, to have too much or too little. Christ gives me the strength to face everything. Say everything. everything. No, say anything. anything. Say anything. anything. And everything. everything. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a hand. Hallelujah. Paul learned through his experiences that contentment is not related to our circumstances. <laughs> contentment is not passive or lazy. It's not the absence of ambition. Instead, contentment means that at every stage of your life, your happiness is measured by an appreciation for what you have. Amen. And not postponed by dwelling on an inventory of what you are missing. Huh. Did you get that? Yeah. Did you get that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna come, I'm coming again, I'm coming again. I'm coming again, really coming again now. Contentment is not passive or lazy. It's not the absence of ambition. Instead, contentment means that at every stage of your life, your happiness is measured by, by an appreciation for what you have. And not postponed by dwelling on an inventory of what you are missing. I want to share with you four ways to conquer coveting. First, resist comparing myself to others. Resist comparing myself to others. You know why? You know why? You are unique. God has made you you, and he did not make you somebody else. Resist comparing yourself to others. Oh, oh, I'm not pretty. I'm not as pretty as Sister Jody. Oh, oh I'm not as pretty as Sister Beth. Oh, I'm not as pretty as Sister Esther. Oh, I'm not as pretty as this one and that one. Resist comparing yourself to others. You are uniquely made by God. You are not meant to be like somebody else. You are only meant to be yourself. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Comparing yourself, comparing always leads to forbidding. Yes. One of the greatest lessons you can ever learn is 
to be able to admire without having to acquire. Amen. If the only things in life you enjoy are the things you own, you're going to be miserable because you can't own everything. Oh, is anybody here with me today? You cannot own everything. So why do we constantly come there? Why do we constantly come there? Because the way we keep score in our society is by possessions. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me, church? Mm -hmm. What I possess? Ah, my house. I'm going to check your house out so I can go and build one that uh, is better and bigger than yours. Uh, stuff like that. Oh, I want to check your car out so I can go and buy one that is more expensive than yours. You're so foolish. You're so foolish. So foolish. Why well, pay for my Toyota $150 a month? As an example, oh, you want to beat that? You go get a Lexus and pay $700 a month. So foolish. So foolish. So foolish. We are insecure. So we're always looking around and asking, how can how am I doing compared to so and so and so and so? How am I doing compared to Brother Wills? How am I doing compared to Deacon Stewart, Deacon Briggs? How am I doing compared to Brother King? How am I doing? Listen to this. Net worth has absolutely no relation to self-worth. Net worth has absolutely no relation to self-worth. You can be possessed by your possessions, sacrificing values, morals, integrity, even relationships just to obtain more things. How many people know what I'm talking about? First Timothy chapter 6 verse 9 says this, people who want to be rich fall into all sorts of temptations and traps. They are caught by foolish and harmful desires that drag them down and destroy them. Folks, are you hearing this? Yeah. Are you hearing this? Are you listening to this? Amen. When you can truly enjoy the success, happiness and blessings of others, you know you are on the right track. Did everybody hear me? Did everybody hear me? Did everybody hear me there? Amen. When you can truly enjoy the success, happiness, and blessings of others, you know you are on the right track. Yes, sir. But when you feel resentment, you are ensnared by the sin of covetousness. Amen. It's time for us to be happy about the person that sits, sits next to us. Yeah. Doesn't matter what position we find ourselves in in life. What the status, what our status is, we need to start being happy for the person that's next to us who might have a higher status than we are, than we do. I want to take your pens up once again. Ahab committed Naboth's property. First Kings chapter 21. And in 2 Samuel chapter 11, David committed Uriah's wife. Yeah. Ah, and we, we, we know what happened there. We, we know what happened there. Yes, sir. We, we know what happened there. Yes, ah, covetousness. I mean, a man after God's own heart. A man after God's own heart. And if that can happen to him, oh, who says it can't happen to us? Don't tell yourself that you are too strong, folks. Man, don't tell yourself you're too strong. When you get in some corner with some nice, pretty, pretty, pretty girl, don't tell yourself you're too strong. Don't let me tell you, the devil is tricky. Yes. And the devil certainly played a trick, some tricks on David. He just knew how to get him. The devil knows how to get you. The devil knows how to get you. How many people know what I'm talking about? The devil knows how to get you. You need God, you need Jesus, you need the Holy Ghost in your life to keep you going Amen. on the right road. Saul committed David's popularity. Saul slain his thousands, but David, 
It's 10,000. Oh, really? Really? I'm going to get even with him now. You know what? Uh, Miriam committed Moses' ministry. Numbers chapter 12. Moses, Numbers chapter 12. Miriam committed Moses' ministry. But I have a question for us. What do you commit? What do you commit? This is a question that we all need to answer ourselves. Proverbs 14 verse 30 says, It's healthy, there's a CED, CED version, it's healthy to be content, but envy can eat you up. Let's go on to the second way to conquer coveting. coveting. The second way to conquer coveting is rejoice in what I do have. Yeah. Rejoice in what I do have. None of us would have anything if it were not for the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, I don't hear a lot of amen. amen. I don't hear a lot of them at all. Amen. I don't hear a little at all. Amen. Uh -huh. None of us would have anything if it were not for the goodness of God. Amen. He wants us to enjoy what He has given to us. Yeah. Do you believe the church? Yeah. Do you believe the church? Yeah. That God wants us to enjoy everything, all the things that He has given to us. Whatever He has given to us, He wants us to enjoy. Think of how you feel as a parent. When your children enjoy what you give them. Think of how you feel as a parent. When your children enjoy what you give them. Yes, sir. It went out with his feet. Bought a tailor and purchased a really nice piece for my very clean daughter. <laughs> Laid it on her bed. Yeah. She came home, she saw it on her bed. So she didn't say anything, I didn't hear anything from God. And so I said to her, I said, um, did you did you check the thing that I um, put on your bed? Said, oh, you yeah. were I said, so who else? You weren't here, your mother wasn't here, nobody was there. I was the only one. So I said, he didn't even say anything. He, he didn't say whether it fit. Because if it didn't fit, I'm going to take it back and return it and exchange it or something. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. But when she says to me, oh, I like it. It's nice. I feel good. Yes, sir. Yes, I do feel good. Yes. Uh, is there any parent in here who wouldn't feel good about that? Oh, See, because I have a daughter that you eat. To shop for, she, it's, it's so okay. difficult to shop for her. My yes. mother and I, we go out and we're looking at some really beautiful, nice things. Yes. And you send a picture more. I, do you want this? Um, no, no, I don't like it. Uh, we shopping in the store. Uh, do you like this? No, I don't. Yeah. So you feel good when you, your children appreciate and love what you give them. Yes. That's what God wants us. God wants. God feels good. He feels good. He feels good when we enjoy what He gives us. Because we are his children. We are his children. We are his children. Praise be to God. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 19. It says, and it is good. It's a good thing. New Living Translation. To receive wealth from God. And the good health to enjoy it. What is wealth without health? What is wealth without help? All the riches in the world you might have, but if you don't have help, you can't enjoy it. It doesn't matter what your wealth is. If you don't have help, it means nothing. My God. It's a good thing to receive wealth from God and the good and health. 
to enjoy it. To enjoy your work and accept your lot in life. That is indeed a gift from God. How many people believe that today? Some people fall into the trap of when and then thinking, which says, when I get, then I'll be happy. <laughs> when I get, then I'll be happy. But that's faulty logic. Because things never satisfy. Look at the person next to you and say, things never satisfy. Come on, express yourself. Things never satisfy. What are you waiting for to make you happy, church? Oh, I'm asking a question. I'm asking a question. What are you waiting for to make you happy? What are you waiting for to make you happy?